Welcome back to Elevate Life, Life Coaching. I am your host, Jula Prevlon. Thank you all so much for tuning in. Thank you all so much for subscribing, liking, and sharing your comments on the YouTube channel so far. I am so encouraged and so excited of continuing this journey of producing videos to help you on your life, on your life journey. And um, and that's what this YouTube channel is about, is really to give you some tips, some, um, some professional and personal um, experiences, gleaning from my professional and personal experiences to help you on your life journey. That's the YouTube channel. For today's episode, I want to talk a little bit about the myth of perfection. So something happened after I posted and published the last video. I rewatched it and looked at it and instantly the inner critic came out. You know the inner critic. It is the critic that lies inside of you whenever you do something public, whenever you preach, well, at least for me, whenever I preach, whenever I teach, whenever I do training, whenever I speak to a large audience and I come home, this inner critic comes out with a vengeance, asking all kinds of questions. And it did the very same thing after I published the last video. Why were your hands moving this way? Why did you use the word really so many times? Oh, you forgot to say this. Oh, you should have said it this way. Oh, you shouldn't have said this. Different people are watching. Why, why, why? Why did you do this? That's the inner critic. The inner critic that wants you to be perfect. Now, what you all don't know about the last video is that I spent months planning that first video. I spent months planning the YouTube channel. I hired someone to do the intro. I hired someone to do the outro. Well, it was the same person. Some great musicians helped with the background music. I watched other YouTubers to get some inspiration from them to see how they do their videos. And that video alone, I must have taped like 30 different videos, real talk. 30 different times, different days, putting on the same shirt and just trying to get it to a place where it was close to perfect. I wanted it to be perfect. I wanted it to be well done. And even then, you guys, I came out with that inner critic asking questions about why it wasn't perfect. So today, that's the inspiration for this this um, for this episode is the the myth of of perfection. Brene Brown connected the need to be perfect with shame. So many of us want to be perfect because we want to avoid shame. And the message that shame um, tells us is that we are not good enough if things are not perfect. We are not worthy of love. We are not worthy of honor. We are not worthy of anything if we are not perfect. And so when we are looking at, uh, at, uh, at the myth of perfection, we're looking at how it's tied into shame. Because a lot of what we do, a lot of the negative feelings that we have, um, a lot of the anxiety that we have from when things are not perfect, it's tied to this um, this shame, this idea of shame. So pick up her book, The Gifts of Imperfection, to help you. I want to give you some resources at, as well to help you. But today I want to um, um, ask you, I want you to ask yourself three questions as you're navigating this 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 whole journey of perfection because a lot of people hold back from doing things a lot of people do not dream they not they don't um envision doing anything great in life or anything at all they don't step into their purpose because they're afraid that they don't have a product that is perfect enough that is good enough or even comparing yourself to the other person it's not as good as so and so so what's the point the point is God has created you with a vision and he's calling you for this purpose and he's given you a calling and you have to step into it however imperfect it is so today 
I want to breathe life into you. I want to release you so that you can dream, so that you can have vision, so that you can step out. Now, the 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 um the goal is not perfect, but the goal is hard work. I haven't met anyone who doesn't want to do the hard work, but they are scared to death that their hard work is not good enough, that they are scared to death of shame. They are scared to death of feeling shame. So today I want to give you some tips, but I want you to follow up with the book. Brene Brown did, does a great job talking about shame and in the gift of imperfection. And But I want to give you some tips to help you get started. The first question I want you to ask yourself is, why why do I want to be perfect? Okay, so that's the first question. Why do I want to be perfect? What exactly is perfection going to do for me? What exactly is perfection going to do for me? If it's perfect, then what? Okay, then what? So the second question is, what will happen if it's not perfect? Again, you know, Brene Brown says our motivation, a lot of our motivation is to avoid pain, avoid shame. You know, that not only will we shame ourselves, but we will project that inner critic onto other people thinking that other people will shame us if our product is not perfect enough. So it's all tied into shame. Here's the third question. Who will be the judge of whether my project or my product or my vision or the thing that I'm stepping out on faith on is perfect enough. Who will be the judge? The reality is the judge that we're thinking about are a whole bunch of other people who are imperfect themselves. Isn't that bizarre? That we would waste the, um, people who are imperfect so heavily that we would weigh our vision so heavily on people who are imperfect. That is so bizarre that imperfect people are going to judge whether my work, my craft, my vision is perfect enough. That is so bizarre. So what I want to share with you today to release you once again is do it afraid. Do it imperfect. Do it messy. You will have some fears. Do it anyway. It will be imperfect. Do it anyway. The journey will be messy. Do it anyway. You know, the 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 what I realized over the years is that we don't wake up knowing exactly the perfect things to do. When we are born, we have to crawl, we have to learn to walk, we have to to make mistakes, we have to fail. And it is throughout the journey, we start becoming. It is throughout the journey, we start correcting mistakes. It is throughout the journey, it humbles us. It is throughout the journey of failing and getting back up again that we start learning more about ourselves, more about our craft. It is throughout the journey. The journey itself is sometimes the goal. The journey itself is what helps us in the area of becoming who God created us to be. So do it afraid, do it imperfect, do it messy, and join me on this other side. So, four reminders. When you have done all you can, when you have tried, when you have put your best foot forward, when you have gotten the degrees, the certification, you have done your hard work, you have hired help, you have gotten support, you have done it. Here are four reminders, four things to ask yourself. Have I done my best? and worked hard on this project, on this product, on this vision? Have I done my best and have I worked hard? If at the end of the day, your answer is yes, then you got it, you're good. Here's the second thing. Am I proud of the end results? Let me tell you, I was so proud of myself for publishing that last video. My hair was looking good. My face was looking good. The color was great. I had, I, I was proud of myself that I had sat on this for so long and finally, you know, I published it. I pressed publish and I was so proud of myself. So yes, I was proud of myself. Third question, did you enjoy the journey? I ain't gonna lie. 
halfway through the journey of producing this last video, I was like, oh Lord, I am done. I am so done. This is hard work. How do these YouTubers do it? But then after I relaxed a little bit, you know, I started fitting into the role and, you know, started feeling myself a little bit. I was having so much fun. I was asking myself questions and I was laughing at myself, poking fun of myself, you know. It, I just stopped taking it so seriously. Like, just be yourself. Be you. All that I have to offer is myself. So here it is. Here I am. Here's the last question. Who are the people whose opinion mattered the most to you? Ooh, yeah, that's a good question, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Uh, so while I was videotaping this video, this one, my oldest son called and he FaceTimed me. He was like, ooh, mom, you look good. What are you doing? Where are you going? My husband said the same, the same thing. And while we were FaceTiming, he took a, a screenshot of me and he was like, oh, good job, mom. You know, their opinion mattered to me. The twins, you know, my twin sons, they encouraged me to make this video. My sisters, my good friends, my goddaughter, so many people. I'm like, what do you think about this? Well, I'm thinking about this. Their opinion matter. And I'm not saying your opinion doesn't matter, but you're not close to me. We don't live next door to one another. But those people who are closest to you, their opinion should matter. Not everybody else's op opinion. I love the feedback. I love the encouragement. Thank you all so much for it. Um, but at the end of the day, I have to ask myself, who are in the inner circle that I want to rely on to give me great feedback of what to change, of what to fix, of how to, to do it better and how to continue to pour into it. So their opinion matter. As always, thank you all so much. Send me your questions, send me your comments. I would love to respond to some of your questions. So send me questions. I haven't received too many questions. Okay, I'm done for today. I want to leave you with some words of affirmation. Number one, you were created in the image of God. And because of that, you have worth. I mean, you are so worth it because you are God's image bearer. So you are worth um, figuring yourself out. You are worth figuring out your purpose. You were created with the ability to create. I believe because we were created with the image of God, in the image of God, we also, like him, have the ability to create. So go and create some things, you know, make some things happen. Um, number three, you were created for more than just money. You know, at the end of the day, we all turn to dust. There will not be one person whose dust is gold. It's all going to be dust. So it's important to leave a lasting impact, a lasting um, vision uh, on people's life um, because money is not all there is to it. Money will get us into a lot of great things, vacations. And if you make a lot of money, send me some. You know, I wanna do some things with money, um, but there's more to life than just making money. And lastly, you were created on purpose for a purpose. Figure it out. Let's do it together. As always, thank you uh, again. I think I already said thank you. I was supposed to end this like a minute ago. But anyways, do it afraid. The myth of, of perfection. Here it is right here in front of you. Thank you all so much for tuning in. Like, subscribe, comments. I want to hear from you. All right. Bye. Have a good one, guys. Here's the fingers again. Ugh, fingers. All right. Thank you, guys. Bye.